How's it going guys? My name is Zach with The Movie Castle and today we're going to be taking a look at The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave. This is from 1971 and is directed by Emilio Maragelli and stars Anthony Stefan, uh, Maria Malfatti, and Enzo Tarasio. Sorry if I mispronounced any of those names. But I have it here on a double pack. It has The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave on one side and The Red Queen Kills Seven Times on the other. And the the spine lists this as the Emilio uh, Malgredi. I, I, sorry, I can't pronounce that. Uh, but the Killer Queen box set, and this was put out by No Shame. Fun name for a DVD releasing company. Uh, but I do like this multi-pack because it really uh, contains pretty much everything you want. This director made a few other films that I think were like crime films, but these are his only two Giallo movies and they put them both right here on the same set. Great to have them in one place and I'll probably get to Red Queen pretty soon because this one was pretty fun. It's a very interesting movie. I don't want to overhype it and say it's the best thing ever, but it really does have a lot of stuff going for it. Uh, for example, the old gothic atmosphere, things like, you know, graveyards and big castles with torture dungeons, and even that, you know, older, you know, kind of, I guess you'd say, penny dreadful mentality of, she's gone and it's driving me to madness. That's really cool, even though the film is set in like the late 60s or early 70s. So you get all this gothic stuff, but there still are cars and every now and then you'll see a, you know, a much more pop place, you know, so it is kind of a fun juxtaposition, you know, almost like here's elements of the, the modern world seeping into the gothic atmosphere. And there's really cool stuff, like the horror sequence in here, when Evelyn comes out of the grave. It's a pretty fun, really intense sequence, and I really did like that. But hence my problem, the horror sequence. It's not a super scary movie, and it's really only that one sequence that decides to swing for the fences. And I really could have used more stuff with the horror, more stuff with the ghost, it was really kicking off, but it just didn't use it too often. And I, w I really wish this was much more of a horror movie. Instead, what this kind of focuses on is both mystery and eroticism. I guess eroticism is kind of self-explanatory. I, I don't want to oversell it. I mean, I've seen a lot sleazier Italian movies, let me tell you. It's not the biggest thing ever, but you can tell that is a focus. There is a ton of breast in this movie. But the mystery, I think, is more the problem. Because, you know, I did like the kind of not knowing what was going on and trying to piece together the clues. But, I, I don't know, maybe I'm kind of a stickler about mystery. I like being able to find the clues, seeing all that stuff, and going, oh... How did I miss this? How did I not know that would happen? I like a good mystery, but here it's just a few little clues. There's no way you could possibly piece all this together. And then when you get to the end, there's like 20 different unnecessary twists. And the thing is, good twists are good, but I do kind of feel like you're just jerking me around for the sake of it, you know? I, I wish the mystery was set up better because... It does eat up so much of the runtime. Granted, I know, stereotypically, Giallo does kind of go all over the place and have a wild, unpredictable atmosphere, which I get that. But again, I would be able to forgive that a lot more if we had more scary sequences that I could latch on to those instead. Overall, what it does right, it does pretty well. You know, again, good gothic atmosphere, and when it does horror, it, it does it pretty well. I just wish we got more of that, and I think I want to say, if you're Giallo fans, you'll probably like it, and you'll probably get a lot out of it, but I don't think I would recommend it as someone's first Giallo movie, you know? If you don't click, 
you're really not going to click. And yeah, I do wish it was scarier, you know? But for what it is, it's good. And if you're fans of Atmosphere, you'll like it. Uh, let's analyze this a little further. I'm not going to do any major spoilers, but I do want to take a moment to talk about the plot and analyze what's happening. So I'm not going to go to the end. I'm not going to ruin all those different twists. But let's take a moment, dig down, and do a bit of an analysis section. We open up with what's actually a pretty good scene. A man and a prostitute, and he's taking her back to his place. And we get all these fun little clues that sum things up. He takes a smoke break, and while she's not looking, he kicks off his fake license plates. That's a good clue. And then they get to his place, and it's actually a big castle. And while he does have a modern bedroom inside the castle, he says, no, no, let's get out of here and let's go to my dungeon. And she is just all happy and just, you know, ready to go to work and is missing several obvious clues before he finally takes out a whip and proceeds to kill her. It's a very good, very tense scene where the audience so knows something's up and she's just oblivious and you can't help but go get out of there get out of there it's pretty good but that being said how this angles the plot and what's going on I, I don't know if it's the best for example we do get essentially the same scene again later now I get it we have to show that he's doing this in a serial fashion it's more than just one thing he's doing it to lots of women but in turn, when we get the same scene, just one more time, like it's not the whole movie about his torture dungeon, we just get it one more time to show he's doing it more than once, but for so much it feels like just the same scene until we get to the end and she actually runs away this time and we get a little chase sequence, which is fun, except for she makes mistakes and you yell at the screen and say, quit looking at that and just go, but whatever. I just kind of feel that it would be much better if we combined these two sequences, put the chase sequence on the end of the first one, and then just have something to indicate at the end of that scene that it was a serial event, i.e. like show him tossing the body and there'd be like other graves or something. You know, you could have gotten it out that way. But also, this guy's our main character, and we're showing right off the bat He's killing people, and it is an interesting thing. You know, it's like he has a wife, and he has this fantasy, you know, a memory of her running naked through the grass, and you can tell that, you know, she died, and he's all messed up about it, and he'll get these women confused for Evelyn. Oh, okay, that's cool, but having him kill people and having him be the main character, like, Maybe if we didn't know about this, like didn't know he was a murderer till the end and that was the twist, then maybe that would have worked. Or if we had another main character and he was a side piece, you know, like if we follow the doctor, he has a doctor that wants what's best for him and doesn't know he's killing people. That would have been a good main character, but he's barely in the movie. And then later on, he'll get a wife character and she would have been a good main character, but she just doesn't come into the movie until later. So, yeah, we're just going to be uh, following this murderer around, and uh, that's just what we're doing. Okay, cool, whatever. Uh, eventually, his doctor will say, you need to remarry, which, yeah, I think modern psychiatrists would uh, change their tune on that. Nowadays, everyone's like, tackle the root of the problem and learn to be supportive by yourself before you get in another relationship. Or you could just go headlong into a new one and try to bury it, which is easier. Uh, so the doctor says get married and then he has a cousin that comes over and says, hey, let's go party. And at the party, he meets a blonde lady that he falls in love with, sleeps with on the first night and says, let's get married that night, cut to right after the wedding. Yeah, this goes pretty quick, 
but his wife was a redhead. All the women he murdered were redheads. Yeah, kind of a redhead horror movie. Um, but she's blonde, so it's saying, hey, I'm trying to get someone else and not just replace my wife. Maybe she'll survive. But of course, there is that mystery element where something seems up. There's this big, weird S pendant, a pendant with a big S on it, that he threw in the well. It belonged to one of the women he murdered, and that keeps showing up. And then, and then the milk. Yeah, not the scariest of drinks, but, you know, he asks a maid for milk, and then the glass of milk is missing. And the, when the wife goes to get a new one, she says, I saw a maid with red hair. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Milk's just not scary. <laughs> the scene doesn't work that way. But, you know, she knows that something's up, even though she doesn't know about the murders and she doesn't know everything. There is some clues and there's some fun, strange stuff and wacky other characters. Like, Evelyn had a brother who knows about the killings. And the guy's just bribing him off. At one point, he only wants, like, 30 pounds. And I'm like, oh, that's a cheap ransom. And then you get uh, an ant character who has an electric wheelchair. But it's kind of a weird, big wheelchair that actually goes really fast. And she is kind of prim and proper and wants to keep the estate right. And then you get the maids. Like, he hires maids, and all the maids look exactly the same for whatever reason. Fun, weird Italian moments, you know, it, Italian horror just loves to do slightly off-the-wall scenes like four or five identical maids for who knows why. The director just thought it would be fun, I guess. But eventually we do get to some horror and we do get, like I said, a really good horror scene. Wish it was more than a scene. And there are stuff I like. Again, I just wish the mystery was a little more grounded and I wish it was a little scarier, because it does build up to a fun enough finale, but then when you get to all those unnecessary twists just for the sake of being surprising, it does kind of feel a little disconnecting. Overall, I'd say this is a good movie. Not a great movie, but if you guys like Giallo and you like gothic atmosphere, there is quite a bit to get out of this, but like I said earlier, not where I would start with Giallo. A good enough time if you're into this sort of thing. Anyway, to everyone who's watched so far, thank you for watching. To everyone who's liked and subscribed, thank you. You really are helping the channel out. I'll leave a relevant playlist on the bottom, probably my Italian movies playlist. If you guys want to see me talk about stuff like this, you can click there and see more. Anyway, have a good day. I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Relevant playlist on the bottom. Have a good day now.